Well, let's get more on this now with Chris Hegedorn, who's the former Executive Secretary of the UN Committee on World Food Security. He's also an adjunct professor of global food politics at Sciences Po, and he joins us now from Paris. Really good to have you with us, Chris. The World Health Organization is uh, the latest organization to warn of a famine. It says that children are on the brink of dying because of acute hunger. Explain to us just how close are we to seeing a famine in Gaza? Well, good morning and thank you for having me. I wish it was a happier occasion to be speaking, but uh, the situation in Gaza, as you rightly de uh, de uh, described, is getting increasingly desperate. The World Food Program was one of the, the key agencies that is trying to get food into the Gaza Strip says in its latest reporting that half the population has no, no food at all. Um, access is severely restricted. Um, aid convoys, as uh, you mentioned earlier, are there. They're on their border. But um, the accompaniment by police and security forces in the Gaza Strip are hampered by uh, military actions from Israel. So the level of starvation is is extremely high. You've heard the, the numbers and you rightly describe the definition of famine, which is a, a very specific term uh, that has a series of measurements which is described in the integrated phase classification system, which uh, is used to uh, measure hunger and starvation in about 30 countries. And Chris, in previous famines in other parts of the world, one of the problems has been that there hasn't been enough uh, food supplies to provide for those uh, affected communities. In this case, though, uh, the supply of aid isn't the problem, is it? It's uh, the, the, the denial of entry of this food into Gaza. It, it must be frustrating as someone who used to lead an organisation that deals uh, with these problems. It is frustrating, and it's hard to watch uh, all of us feel feel uh, you know, compassion for those who are suffering, and, and this goes uh, to those who have suffered on both sides. But conflict is a problem not just in Gaza, it's uh, worldwide. You see enormous uh, problems in Sudan, in places like Afghanistan. So uh, conflict is probably one of the most challenging issues that we address, and this is where diplomacy has to prevail here. Um, I understand there are negotiations going on in the region. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of State um, not only is involved very uh, carefully and closely in those uh, negotiations, but has also brought to light the the risk that the Gazan population is uh, uh, is facing, as did Mr. Volk in your earlier uh, earlier message. As you say, negotiations are underway on a number of fronts, including uh, on a possible truce. Uh, that will hopefully see uh, the much-needed uh, delivery of aid, an adequate uh, amount of aid, into Gaza. When that does happen and uh, Gaza is uh, taken back from the brink of famine, uh, explain to us what the longer-term effects of this food scarcity is, because uh, I, I presume that the effects uh, of starvation and acute malnutrition will linger on for years. Indeed it does. This is what uh, nutritionists are constantly warning about, the issues of stunting and wasting of particularly uh, young children. Stunting uh, is when uh, normal growth is uh, impeded. Um, for height, uh, weight as well. So these are conditions that persist throughout a lifetime. In other words, if you're underfed as a child, uh, particularly under the age of five, this has lifetime, lifelong consequences for development, for uh, one's health and uh, mental development. So these are issues that uh, are really serious. This is why um, it's so important to get food in. This, uh, of course, is going to have to be uh, permitted and uh, facilitated by the Israeli government um, and the military that's operating there. There are plenty of trucks, as you said, full of aid. There is new efforts to get aid uh, onshore from the ocean. Um, but these things are being impeded by military action. So, um, of course, we're all hoping and praying that uh, diplomacy prevails, that uh, there is a truce to start with. But, of course, uh, we want to see a longer 
uh, term settlements where um, there's a political, uh, a new political situation where uh, the hostages are released, where uh, aid and uh, medical uh, medical uh, inputs are allowed into the strip. But for two million people, this is desperate. And uh, every day that goes by, uh, we're facing an even higher risk. Okay, Chris Hegedorn, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on TRT World. Thank you very much.